to welcome to the next tutorial in electric power system. In this tutorial, we will focus on economic load dispatch and load frequency control. So, the first problem is the fuel inputs per hour of plants 1 and 2. So, there are two plants whose fuel inputs are given by the mathematical relationship and the units are in rupees per hour. So, the two plants will have two different powers P1 and P2 and their fuel inputs are given. First, we have to determine the economic operation schedule and the corresponding cost of generation if the maximum and the minimum loading on each unit is given to us as 100 megawatt and 25 megawatt. The demand given to us is 180 megawatt and transmission losses are neglected. So, this is the first part of the question. Second part is, if the load is equally shared by both the units, determine the saving that is obtained by loading the unit as per equal incremental production cost. So, there are two parts in this question. Let us see the solution to this. So, the fuel input is given to us and we are using these equations to solve this problem. First, we will determine the incremental production cost of both the unit, which is given by the differential of the fuel input with respect to its own power that is df1 by dp1 and df2 by dp. It means we have to differentiate the first equation and the second equation to get the incremental cost of the plants that is given by third and the fourth equation. Once we have obtained the incremental production cost, the economic operation of the plant can be obtained under the condition that the incremental production cost of both the plants should be equal. It means we have to equate the equation 3 and equation 4 that we have got. It. So that let us consider that as to be the first equation to be solved. Second equation is the total power demand which is already given to us as 180 megawatt that will be the second equation. So we have to solve these two equations in two variables that are in P1 and P2. So once we solve the two equation we will get the power in each plant as 88.89 megawatt and 91.11 megawatt. Now once we have got the power of each plant, cost of generation we can obtain as the sum of the fuel inputs F1 plus F2 where the P1 and P2, the power in the two equations we have already determined. Hence we can determine the fuel input in rupees per hour for both the plants. Now the total cost of the production will be the summation of the power plants F1 and F2. Now under the second case it has been given that if the load on each unit is 90 megawatt, what is the cost of the generation? It means that we will be using the same equation but instead we will put 90 megawatt for P1 and P2 and we will obtain the values of F1 and F2. And the total cost now we can obtain by putting the summation for F1 and F2 under the second case. So the saving that can be obtained can be estimated from the two relationship that we have got under the two different power conditions. So if we subtract the values we will get 0.57 per hour in rupees is the net saving for the power plants. Next problem. Determine the incremental cost of received power and the penalty factor of the plant whose single line diagram is shown. The incremental cost of production is also given by the relationship in rupees per megawatt hour. The plant 1 is basically a generator where it is giving 10 megawatt power and the load is taking 8 megawatt and there is a transmission loss of 2 megawatt. So, we can determine the penalty factor of the power plant using the relationship as we have the relationship for the penalty factor which is given by 1 divided by 1 minus the differentiation of the power loss with respect to the production. So we have seen that here 2 megawatt is the power loss where 10 megawatt is the power generation for the plant. So net penalty factor is 10 by 8 which we have to multiply this penalty factor with the incremental production cost that is df1 by dp1. Now in this equation of 
incremental cost the power p1 is basically 10 megawatt that we have to substitute and multiply it with the penalty factor then we will get what is the cost of the received power that is rupees 5 per megawatt hour next problem a two bus system given by p1 and p2 which are connected to bus number 1 and bus number 2 is shown in the figure if a load of 125 megawatt is transmitted from plant 1 to the load and a loss of 15.625 megawatt is incurred determine the generation schedule and the load demand if the cost of the received power is 24 rupees per megawatt hour solve the problem using coordination equations and the penalty factor method approach the incremental production cost of the two plants are given by the relationship in the problem so we have to use the coordination equations and the penalty factor approach for this problem so given the incremental production cost equations and the two plant system we can say that the load at the bus 2 is there alone so we have a load at the bus 2 now the loss in the line will not be affected by the generator at plant 2 so the, whatever the generator is collected at plant 2 the loss will not be affected by that it means that we can have the power loss equation as the constant b11 multiplied with p1 square so b12 and b21 will be zero similarly b22 will be also zero now the power loss is already given which is 15.625 megawatt and the p1 that is the power of the plant one is 125 megawatt is square we can put it so we can determine what is the constant b11 which is coming to be 0 0.001 now the coordination equation is we have the incremental production cost multiplied with the penalty factor we will get the value of lambda so if we put the equation to determine what is the value of dpl by dp1 we have to determine this first so given that pl equation we can obtain from this relationship where b11 we have estimated 0.001 multiplied with p1 square so if we differentiate this equation we will get dpl by dp1 df1 by dp1 the incremental cost is already given in the problem so we can form one equation of the coordination equation for the power plant this coordination equation is coming from the main equation which is a function of p1 the value of lambda that is the incremental cost is already given in the problem that is 24 so if we solve this equation in one variable that is p1 we get 123.28 megawatt similarly the coordination equation for plant 2 also we can determine and the power in plant 2 will be 80 megawatt hence the power loss that is equal to b11 multiplied with p1 square so this will be equal to 15.19 megawatt so we can determine finally the loss loss will be equal to we have determined the value of p1 plus we have also determined the value of p2 minus the loss in the transmission line so net load is 188.1 megawatt now the penalty factor of plant 1 is basically given by this relationship where dpl by dp1 we have already estimated as minus 0.002 p1 so if we can multiply that penalty factor with the incremental cost of the plant 1 is equal to 25 that is given in the relationship now here in this equation again we have to solve to find the power of the plant 1 which comes to be 128 123.28 megawatt we know that dpl by dp2 value is zero this indicate that the penalty factor l2 loss will be equal to unity and the incremental cost of the received power equal the incremental cost of the production hence we can put this relationship to find the power p2 which is equal to 80 megawatt problem 4 there are two generating stations a and b so we can see there are two generating stations 200 megawatt and 75 megawatt whose uh, full load capacities are given to be 200 megawatt and 75 megawatt the interconnector connecting these two stations has an induction motor or synchronous generator 
for the plant C. Now here we have the plant C and the interconnected is there whose full load capacity is 25 megawatt. So full load capacity of plant C is 25 megawatt. The percentage change of speed of ABC plants are 5, 4 and 3 percentage respectively. The loads on bus bar A and B are 75 megawatt and 30 megawatt. So you have a load here connected in bus num A and bus B of 75 megawatt and 30 megawatt magnitude. Determine the load taken by the bus C and indicate the direction in which the energy is flowing. So given the single line diagram of the power system whose certain data are given that is the full load capacity, percentage change in the speed and the load for the various buses. So if we assume that x megawatt is the power which is flowing from bus A to bus B then we can say that load at station A is basically we have already the load of 75 megawatt at bus station A and x megawatt is flowing so we can say 75 plus x. Now the drop in the speed which is 5% of the full load that is 200 megawatt. So we have 5 by 200 multiplied with 75 plus x which is the load. So the load at station B will be already we have 30 megawatt as the load and x megawatt which is flowing from here will give 30 minus x and the percentage change in the speed will be 4 divided by 75 multiplied with 30 minus x that we have got. Since the output of A corresponding to the power flow through the interconnector is the input to C. So whatever the power is coming from the bus A that is flowing through the interconnector in C we can say that there is a further reduction in frequency approximation by 3x by 25 because 3 is the percentage change in the speed and 25 megawatt is the full load capacity of the plant. The total reduction in frequency from both A and C plant and the reduction of frequency from B when referred to bus B should be the same. So we can form one relationship which we have got it. So we will be having A plus C will be equal to the B bus power. Hence, the power that is flowing which we need to determine as the variable is 1.35 megawatt. Hence, 1.35 megawatt of power will flow from B to A because in the final solution we have a negative sign and we have taken the direction in this way. So, it will be a reverse direction of the power flow which is 1.35 megawatt from B to A. The last problem for today's tutorial is the two turbo alternators that are rated for 110 megawatt and 210 megawatt have a governor drop characteristic of 5%. So you have a drop of 5% governor from no load to full load. They are connected in parallel to share a load of 250 megawatt. Determine the load shared by each machine assuming three governor action. So the two machines are working in parallel and the percentage drop in frequency from both the machines due to different loading must be the same. In that case, if x be the power supplied from 110 megawatt unit, then we can say the percentage drop in the speed is 5x by 110. Similarly, for 210 megawatt power plant, the percentage drop in the speed will be 5x by 210 multiplied with 250 minus x. And we have to equate both the drop in the speed of both the power plants. Then we can determine what is the value of x that is 85.93 megawatt. That is meaning is that the power shared by 210 megawatt is 250 megawatt minus 85.93 which is flowing from one bus to the other. So we have 164.07 megawatt and the power set supplied the 110 megawatt unit will be the same as x which is equal to 85.93 megawatt. So we have taken five problems based on economic load dispatch and load frequency control. These are the most fundamental problem for this type of problem.